Hello everyone, my name is Matt, and here we are back with Turnabout Substitution, and Rhea is now back in investigation, trying to pull around her own dead weight, trying to catch up with everything else. Man, I missed one goddamn good pun and joke to make. Like, Rhea, get your goddamn wits about you. <laughs> I missed that joke. I'm actually so disappointed in myself that I didn't make it. God damn it, I almost forgot of her last name. Jeez, oh man. But at least we have a lead now about um, uh, Miss Poole's telling us to go to Judge's bedroom and all that. Plus the distinct possibility that was raised by both Apollo and Rhea's discussion in her office. And maybe Poole's behind all this? Which in all honesty, so far, no one we've met so far is directly like feels suspicious wise. I mean, I guess a tiny bit Poole, but like she was about to retire before it just feels weird i don't know how to place it to me it just feels weird like everyone feels like there's like no animosity and like <sighs> literally like the game keeps bringing up psychology and all that stuff and like trying to figure things out like motive wise and all that like he's bringing it up a few times Plus, obviously, the whole motive thing of um, uh, the M.O. thing has got me to explain it anyway. It is how it is normally in um, uh, Ace Attorney games. Even if, like, you don't really need to prove who the cul Like, you don't need it to prove the culprit is. It's literally just, you know, just another added thing to, you know, prove and all that for dramatic sake. Like, um, uh, like D. Vasquez in the first game. You technically already proved everything, but, like, you just need to prove it's it was self-defense in that case. Like, you didn't really have any evidence for it, just circumstantial, but, like, it proved, like, your case for you entirely because she confessed afterwards. Like, yeah. Like, they're putting a lot of emphasis on it. It feels like the car is gone, like, everything's gone. Hmm. I guess it means we're supposed to go to our office, like, we're supposed to take Rhea to her office first and everything and then come here and then she's technically with us. Hmm. Well, the car was right there. These tracks in the snow run all the way to the body. I guess there's no doubt that's how he died. There's so many tracks. Did he run over chambers a bunch of times? He had to be a reasonably skilled driver. He had to turn excuse me. He had to turn a bit of a while when reversing. Since the body wasn't in line with the car. Why didn't he just move the body? I guess he was in a hurry from the alarm. Hmm. I mean, yeah, like they make a distinct point that the rear view mirror inside, like the car was broken. Like they made a distinct point, so this could be important. Hmm. Let's see what pun is on this grave. Here lies Arthur Chambers. Ah, that's supposed to be why Judge came to the cemetery. Could this be the urgent matter he mentioned after the trial? If it was, why did he come in the middle of the night? Curiouser and curiouser. Hmm. Now I'm just going back thinking back and like, okay, if like. This is, I kept thinking about this on the top of my head before we go to you know, judges and bedroom. Uh, if literally the mysterious bus killer is someone completely different, it's not Robin Erlenmeyer, then exactly why did they feel the need to kill Judge then? Literally. Like, here of all places. Because, like, Robert Erlenmeyer, if he was walking into a cemetery, like, for a reason, and Judge saw him, I can kind of, I can really get that, because the whole motive like you know making sure to get out stay out of police custody and all that and, like not have anyone call the police on you of your whereabouts it makes perfect sense but why anyone else it feels weird especially if Apollo's going down the whole route that it is someone else which honestly it could be it's a double whammy situation hmm there's like no reason why to attack judge then hmm I guess we'll all go down here. Okay, where would Judge's house be from here? Uh, Judge's bedroom. Oh, wow. Scandalous. <laughs> nice, quaint little place so far. Judge's mansion. Judge's bedroom. Okay. I never would have guessed Judge was in a mansion like this. He had a long and productive career. He knew where to put, invest his money. Oh, the stock markets. I see. Or maybe he made a deal with the Mafia. I thought the Katakis went clean, though. Well, they still kill people, but they now went clean now. All their past crimes don't matter anymore. Hey, don't insult him like that. He never do that. Well, uh, you, you know him more personally than me, so I'm uh, back up. I was kidding, but yeah, you're right. Sorry. It's okay. I know you didn't really mean it. You're 
stop gaslighting me. Anyway, the secret of Judge's death is really here, then we better start investigating. Hmm. Okay. Oh, it's a double it's a double screen thing. Look, it's the balcony. Nice. Hey, his bedroom has a balcony. Nice, that's how you know this place is sweet. Don't open the door. Huh? Why's that snow blowing here? Do you really want to ruin Judge's room like that? Oh yeah, also the fact I'm a you're not wearing a coat. I never even I never even took in consideration what everyone's wearing until Spotter Ring brought up in comments. Just that was just funny. Everyone's completely not in winter clothing. That's just funny to me. <laughs> Why did I not notice that? I'm terrible at noticing people's clothing. Just noting it. Jeez. God. Do you really want to ruin Judge's room like that? I can see from here there's nothing there. Yeah, I guess you're right. But what if there's something hidden in the snow, like that piece of gum underneath there, you know, right? Right? Okay, fine, don't bring it up. Okay, so there's a bulletin board. Oh, a little post note. Hey, puzzles are so 1990s. Why isn't he using ice stickies? Ice stickies? What kind of newfangled Apple smartphone technology is this you're t speaking of? Let's see what he wrote on it. December 27th, Force Bones. Whoa, it's the day and location of the murder. Well, this can't be a coincidence. Well, technically the murder wasn't on the 28th. Yeah, but it was, one o was one, o one in the morning, so... Still. Well, it was probably the night of the 27th when he got there. Anyway, this post-it means he wouldn't ensure he wouldn't forget to go to the cemetery. Of course, now he we need to figure out why. Uh, Arthur Chambers' gravestone was there. It makes sense. Well, I guess it's like they're going the whole fight if you didn't notice the gravestone, assuming. I didn't know a judge was into modern art. It's pretty awful. Wait, that's art? I thought that was a bulletin board. That's abstract art? Okay, like, look, I like abstract art as much as the next guy, but like, that just looks meh. I know there's this one painting I found, like, looking at it from uh, colleague classes, and like, it's literally just rat haphazard lines and like, you know, giant paint things. Then the background was like whitish or pink and like a whole hasmag blob of just ran like randomized rainbow lines and colors splashed around. And even though it de you could definitely tell it was random, it looked quite nice. <laughs> That's actually a really nice room now. Lots of plants. Hmm. The bed. Am I the only one who finds this bed scary? Since when are beds scary? Why would it be scary? It's a bed. Is it okay? Well, every single morning, Judge woke up in this bed. What? And? Every morning, he thought that he had to wake up the next morning in his bed. Except he expected that yesterday. Two, we had no idea what ends so abruptly. What's scary is waking up and not knowing it's the last time. That doesn't make me the bed is scary, though. That just makes it a, the thing you just have is a scary thought. You want to know when you're going to die? Yes, I can die bravely with dignity. Uh, I think I'd just be more nervous the whole time. Okay, now you're starting to creep me out. Sorry, Polly. Uh, yeah. Like, literally, it's like the whole thing of a dentist or doctor's appointment. Okay, the second like you learn about it, like, you're expecting pain or misery, then I'm, uh, you're gonna start being nervous about it. Already? Yeah. So, desk. This is the judge's desk. There might be a clue here. Let's take a closer look. Oh. Well, there's his brother. The picture of Judge's brother, Arthur. Yeah, they were really close. Of course, you have a picture here. He has pictures of Arthur all over the house. Now both Chambers' and brother are gone. Hmm. There's a dog. Hey, did the Judge have a dog or something? He's never mentioned anything about one. This must be a vital clue why this picture is the key to the entire case. What, there's no... What, were there dog tracks in the snow at the... A gravesite? I don't think so. It could just be a childhood pet. This person makes absolutely no sense. I remember he had a dog when he was younger, and he has a picture to remember it by, just like his picture of Arthur. Or maybe that. Shut up, Apollo. You're not some. You're not smart sometimes. Eh. Oh, the, the lamp, I guess. It's a lamp. Rhea, what are you doing? Rubbing it to see if a genie will come out. Wrong lamp. It looks like she's having fun. I won't ruin it for her. I think you should. <laughs> She's going delusional. <laughs> there are two bottles of medicine here. Let's see, the blue one is labeled tranquilizer. 
This crazy judge must have been giving him a lot of stress with everything that's happened. I can't understand him. In fact, I think I'd like a pill right now. What? What? Are you serious? Of course. Uh, okay. Just be careful. They aren't that great for you. I know, I know. But you actually... Okay. Anyway, this green one is apparently a sulfuric. Judge told me he had trouble sleeping after, Ar uh, after Arthur's murder. Hmm. I wonder if these have anything to do with our case. And why Judge put these two similar looking medicine balls right next to each other. Sulfuric added the court record. Well, okay, we got the sulfuric and we put the gave the tranquilizer to... Uh, we gave the tranquilizer to Rhea. Okay, why do we have these? Exactly. They look exactly the same. Like, they look like nail pol- like, you know, like, nail polish bottles, honestly. It says 12, 27, four spoons, can be important clue. Like, we- I just, I just gonna say before I completely forget, like, I just like, like, the aesthetic of, like, the items thing here. I, I don't know how to explain it, but just, just- there's just a lot of varieties in here. It just looks aesthetically pleasing to me. Just look through all this. It's nice. The gun's still white. It's- is it chewed or unchewed? God damn it. Yeah. I think that's everything here then. Oh, cool stuff we f that what we found here which could change the meaning of the what happened, but I don't see anything. Oh, that was Lydia. I was gonna look in the dresser. A wardrobe. Well, the strangest piece of evidence is that post it. The day and location of the murder. Hmm. Do we have anything that could shed some light on why he wrote that post it? Uh, right, that post it. Um. Okay, so we either present some- it's literally just the- can we just present a profile then? Uh, Arthur Chambers. No, that's not it. It must be something different. The post-it? Okay, so if it's not Arthur Chambers, then do we have to- Forest Bones can be more clue. Like, his gravestone was there. Like, are you saying there's another reason there? Uh, do we have to present, like, the- the HD5 file or something? Okay, not his profile then. Okay, and it helps to give it another chance. Yeah, this pa this file. Check out the victim's page. Arthur was killed on December twenty seventh last year. Oh, the anniversary date. Okay, I remember bringing that, but I, eh. And he's buried in Forest Bone Cemetery. He was visiting his brother's grave on the anniversary's death. Two other facts show this. His car was close to Arthur's grave, and flowers in his trunk. Like, oh, so now you're acknowledging that Arthur's grave was there. Oh, I see. I see what is Apollo. You're selective in your memory now. Uh. I already suspected why he went, but this confirms it. This must be that important matter he mentioned after his trial. We didn't really exactly learn anything new. Well, the only thing we have that's, like, technically new is just sulfuric and tranquilizer, but I don't see that's important. This thing doesn't make sense. The child finished in this finished in the afternoon, so why did he wait until the middle of the night to go to the graveyard? I doubt he spent, I doubt he spent eight hours in the cemetery. Oh, that part. Hmm. Oh, of course. Uh, Rhea, I have a theory about this. Suck it to me, Polly. The reason Judge went to the graveyard in the middle of the night is... Oh, oh that's where they came into play then, I guess. So, tranquilizer, sulfuric... Like, one of these two, actually? Sulfuric pills, tranquilizer pills, uh... Sulfuric? He must have fallen asleep from these sleeping pills. Suppose the pills worked for nine hours, a full night's sleep. The trial ended around half past three. If he took these pills and we account for the time it took for him to drive home into the graveyard, then he arrived at 1 a.m., the time of the murder. <gasps> wait, but wait. Even if the times work out, why would he take sleeping pills at all? Hmm. He just mixed up the. He just mixed up among the tranquilizers then? Simple. He took sleeping pills because of this. Because he almost drank nail polish. It all makes sense now. He never meant to take sleeping pills at all. He wouldn't take the tranquilizers, but accidentally took sleeping pills instead. They're the color coded as well, though. Oh, I see. His trauma must have put him under a lot of stress, and he would be much more likely to make a mistake like confusing the medicines when under stress. When he woke up, he rushed to the cemetery only to meet his death. Hmm. Yeah, like, I just want to theorize before, just wrong place or wrong time, but like, the reason of why he was to kill the, the cemetery for some reason is eluding if it's someone else entirely. If it's not Robert Raymond Meyer, it just feels weird. There's absolutely no motive wise for it. Hmm. Rhea, do you get what this means? Yeah, Dutch's presence in the cemetery was an accident. 
So how could the killer know Judge would be there? Yeah, so it's really just wrong place, wrong time. Then that begs the question of why was either Robert Earl Meyer or even uh mysterious bus killer there in the middle of the night? Or like even decide to I don't even know the general just like location wise of like um uh what's nearby the cemetery. Like they decided like past the cemetery to get somewhere or they were trying to hide like running through the i guess you know, the back alley or something like that like, went through and then they the judge saw them and death yeah well maybe he assumed judge would go on the day to visit arthur and wait for hours after all the accident wasn't visiting the cemetery but visiting the cemetery at night maybe but whatever the reason we need to find it out if you want to win the case i guess Poole's right about god damn it Hello? Apollo, the lab results of the mice came back. And? They're... interesting, to say the least. I'll tell you in person. Okay, then. I'll be waiting at the police station. Oh, thanks, Emma. I'll be right over. And who is that? Emma. She found something out about these mice and about those mice in the biology classroom. Oh, really? Then what are we staying around here for? Let's go! Okay, onwards and upwards. Uh, this game of Count Mouse will continue on out of finitum, yeah. God, I still love that stupid, stupid joke in there. <laughs> Theming-wise. <laughs> Emma's waiting for us, just like she promised. Maybe we'll start to get to the bottom of this mystery. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so, the results then. My intuition was right. The mice were infected with a virus. It's contagious for humans. It's called MLJ5. MLJ5? A, a virus? Is, is it like that terrible mutation of the H1N1 virus that killed hundreds of thousands of people in 2010? What? No, not at all. Don't worry. For starters, it has nothing to do with, inf if, with influenza. It reacts with a pigment in the skin and for the mice, paralyzes their muscles. The effects on humans are much less dramatic. This also is not an airborne disease. I mean, you need to be in contact with infected animals to contract it. That really shouldn't be a concern. You might want to meet with your doctors in case. Hmm? Why do a virus? Okay, but what does it mean in terms of the case? Well, it's actually a little difficult for mice to catch the virus, too. They had to be directly injected with it by someone else. It's safe to assume it was that same night as the murder, since someone who would have noticed it if it was beforehand. Hmm. The person who fetched the mice was in the classroom the night of the crime is probably the one who planted the music sheet in the photographs, the killer. But why would he infect the mice at all? That's weird. Hmm. Well, scientifically, I have no idea. <laughs> Psst, Polly, maybe Erwin Meyer has an idea. After all, it is his old classroom. Yeah, oh yeah, good idea. Gonna pay another visit to the man in the center of it all. In the center of it all, yeah. Let me read that virus thing again. Reacts with animals' pigment and paralyzes their muscles. Contagious for human beings. Why infect mice with it? And like, if just in the sound of it, like if, if those like animals bite a person, like those exact same, it just paralyzes their muscles then too. Wait, oh, I'm getting reminded of like another like mystery case. Is it like paralyzed in the muscle thing? Go to like. The entirety of the body, like every muscle, including heart, it paralyzes the heart and makes your heart stop beating. Oh my! But like they just injected the mice in the classroom, they just left. So they set up the whole entire thing. Hmm. And the mice itself found the biology classroom infected with MLJ5 virus. Why would they just have mice and the virus like separate? Okay. All right then. So, uh, Erlen Meyer, uh, spec you. Speaks. Liz. Please and thank yous. You're back. Have you found my hippo yet? Sorry, your hippopotamus is another castle. We don't know what that is. Same as ever, I see. <laughs> okay. Alright then, uh, speaks. Do you remember any. <laughs> speaks, your squeaks, truth. <laughs> Squeak now. Do you remember anything about what happened? The eggplant was killed. 
it's winter. There's no there's no crops growing. Killed by whom? The strawberry, of course. Sorry, Charles. <sighs> My God. So, uh, is there anything you'd like me to know about you? I don't have a lemon for a head. What? Great. Okay. Like, okay, I guess we just present the mice or the virus itself then? Mr. Erlenmeyer, we found a few mice like this in your classroom. Do you know anything about them? I know, Muffin Man. Who lives in Jury Lane? <laughs> uh, they were tested. And they have the MLJ5 virus. It makes them yellow and paralyzes them. <laughs> Does that ring any bells? I can hear the bells. Someday I will be with my beloved Link. Link to the past. You're not getting through to him, but how do you expect to speak this lunatic? Uh, speak in Morse code? I don't know. It's like he's not even speaking the same language as us. I've already been through that. <sighs> That's at least 20 times worse. Yeah, instead of like speaking to someone who actually has a speaking different language, like Borginia, now I'm, uh, it's this. Just coded language, yay. You know what I've been thinking? The big issue with Erlenmeyer's trial was with a forged psychological profile. However, despite all the buzz, we never got his real profile. <gasps> Are we gonna look for that now? Oh, I love it. Oh, I would love that. If we could read it, maybe there would be something that would let us speak with him. Hmm, they probably have copies of the Clooney's Asylum. Anyone who tried to treat him would, would need to read it, right? Well, it's as good as places ever to check. Let's go. Okay, Emma, you go speak about your lemons and your eggplants and, you know, your strawberries like some other time, doodos. Wait, you brought up lemon and strawberry? Wait, hold on, what? Well, that's the, the gums there. How would you know about that? Like, I know you found the gravesite, but like... Did you... <laughs> you were the one chewing the gum, oh no. Uh... I don't know. Why'd you bring... Well, I say that, but like, the, what is the eggplant meant to be here? God damn it. Okay, uh, Clooney's Asylum, uh, the, or, the, or in this case, the Knee Prison's Asylum. Wow, looky there. No, the wig's gone. Oh, I see. He broke back into prison to get his wig back. <laughs> I wonder if this place would be as creepy the second time. Yep, still creepy. What are you waiting for, Polly? Let's go get the profile. Oh god, no, no, no! <laughs> Visitors, yes. Ah, where did he come from? Well, I'm glad he's like, okay, you're a patient here, okay. Nice, you're actually put behind uh, bars. Wait, you're walking around. Oh no. I'm Director Clooney, yes. Just like the sign says, Clooney Prison. Oh, he looks official. He could probably help us, right? Right. Eh. Okay. You just... What? Wait, Han. Why would you... My first question is, do you have it in, like... I'm more curious why you would. Hey, Dr. Clooney, could you please tell us where the psychological profiles of your patients are, Cat? We're conducting a murder investigation. I believe it's essential. We need to profile Robert Irwin Meyer. I'm sure you heard of him. Yes, yes, what a cutie we have here. Delicious. Mm, yes. Stop it. I don't know if you're referring to Robert Erlenmeyer in this case or her, but I'm gonna just stop either way. Please, just answer the question. Mm, yes, you two are lucky. I have that report right here. Lucky you two. Why do you have that? Okay. Usually I only keep the profiles of female patients. Helps me um, understand the problems. Okay, you're experimenting. God damn it, I hate this so much. And they confide in me. <laughs> yes. I love it when they talk in their honey voices. Okay. Sony slapped this guy hard. Oh god. Sometimes they let me touch. Yeah, please. Disgusting. We'd love to hear about this later, but right now, could we have this profile of Erlenmeyer? Mm, and, uh-huh, not a potty, but I knew right away when I found his profile, you knew what. It would be invaluable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll give it to you in exchange for a kiss. Uh, okay, Apollo, have fun. <laughs> what? You can't be serious. 
<laughs> yes, of course, Sam. Come on, sweetie, can you please stop? Listen good, you perverted pile of platypus puke. <laughs> nice alliteration to pee there. I know you're not a director, not even the crazies here would believe that. Mm, yes, I suppose I'm less of a director and more of a patient. And we're losing our patience right now, please stop. Oh, duh. Anyway, you just admitted to us that you steal female patients' profiles. You weren't exactly in a position to ask for anything. Now give us a profile or you'll rot in here for the rest of your life. Well, he is getting kind of harsh. Now this guy doesn't deserve it. Why do you even have the thought? He does. He does deserve it. Ooh, when you're angry, you're okay. Have fun with that. I mean it. Do you want to share a cell with Earl, the gut eater, or Tom Cruise? <laughs> what? No, no. Uh, uh, here is his profile. Not my type, but to each their own. Uh huh, yeah. Have fun. I'll just go back to my cell. Our talk has got me excited. Okay. Have fun. <sighs> Plus 50 trauma points. I'll say. I'm tired of all these psychos. For now, I'm only taking sane people as clients. Have fun with that. Anyway, we finally have his real psychological profile. Let's see what it says. Oh! Here's something. According... Okay, a picture of a cat. According to his mother, his parents had bought him a cat named Char Charles, of which he was particularly fond. On a Saturday evening in winter, the patient was crossing the street with his cat when he suddenly encountered a black car driving the wrong way. Strangely, the patient was fast, not to avoid the vehicle while the animal was hit did not survive. His mother remembers scolding him for taking the cat off for a walk alone. She also says that when she and his father are buying or burying Charles in their back the garden, her son accidentally observed the scene from his bedroom. For days after the incident, the patient did not leave his bed and barely spoke to his family. Wait, so when he mentioned Charles, he meant his cat? Okay, now he's a f and he's now has an interest in mice? Okay. <laughs> nice picture of a cat. It's oddly just real life looking instead of the rest of the cartoonish evidence. Nice. Hi, Charles. Nice to meet you. Anyway, this could be just what we need. I'm not so sure. Look at the end. And again, why we listen to this music? <laughs> However, mentioning this incident to the patient is not listed the expected response so far. We're not the first to try this. Maybe, but they were trying to figure out why he killed people. We're probably the first using this to prove they didn't. I mean, it can't hurt to try, can it? I guess not, plus we don't know if we can't we don't try it, right? No, I guess not. It's finally time to enter Erlenmeyer's crazy world. How is it you, like, are you going to use a psychological profile to him uh, as your translator? <laughs> Have fun with that. Let's go, let's see how this all will go down then. Let's see, uh, Dungeon Center. Yeah, eggplants, lemon, strawberry. I mean, it doesn't make sense why he, like, I guess it kind of wouldn't make sense with the lemon and strawberry gum a bit, maybe? But at the same time, it feels weird. <sighs> Ambiguity again, goddammit, why bring it up? This is it. It's time to get to the bottom of this enigma of a man. Okay. Talking to him hasn't worked before, and it won't work now. And he's shown what I found at Clean's Asylum. Okay, I'm, uh... Do you want to find out what uh, what happened all those years ago in your past, dude? So, Mr. Erlenmeyer, we have a copy of your psychological profile. And just a piece of paper, Polly. You need to show him something that really has meaning to him. Something that really has meaning to him? Oh. Cat. <laughs> Erlenmeyer's pet cat was hit by a car when Erlenmeyer was seven. Seven? Oh, boy. Mr. Erlenmeyer, Robert, I know what happened to your cat, Charles. What happened to him was terrible, but you can't blame yourself. It wasn't you. It was the person who drove that car. You're an innocent man. You have been, even when you thought you killed Charles or confessed to the mysterious bus killings. Please, talk to me. Please tell me you understand. I don't... oh my... Of... course... Huh? Of course I'm innocent! I've been trying to tell you that this entire time! Ah, you're completely back to normal! Yes, thanks to you. There's no time for that! Do you know who the killer is? Yes, I know who killed Judge. And who is it? 
Really? Please tell us! The killer. The killer is. Mr. Erlenmeyer? Mr. Erlenmeyer? What's going on? R Robert! What? God damn it. He. fainted. Okay. Well, it probably wouldn't be that easy. <laughs> but, okay. Qu quick! Call a doctor! The doctor told us Erlen Meyer would be fine, but I need to rest before we could talk to him. The answers to her questions would have to wait until the trial the next day. Oh. Okay, we're just going to strain the trial then. Wow, we I got my health back. Okay. Wow, we Gulgy Willikers. Okay. Hmm. Well, so that means he like. Okay, so it wasn't a whole thing of like he was knocked out then. Like, he said he, like, he went to sleep somewhere, and, like, he woke up, and he was arrested. So he he knows who the killer is, but, like, what well, makes sense, like, well, he said he was asleep, but, like, how did he know about, like, the strawberry gum, like, strawberry lemon gum thing? Hmm. Look at that profile again. I want a profile. Patient's name, Robert Erlen Meyer, born 10-13-1967, single, personality traits. Oh, okay, this is completely a different thing entirely, and the bottom thing is all that. Okay, introvert, a loner, since afraid of human contact, intense stares can be interpreted as a way not to look at the person in front of him. Passive, weak, non-violent. Non-violent, then, like, okay. Usually calm and reserved, will tolerate gentle slaps, pinching, and shouting. Frequently displays signs of masochistic behavior. He's regularly tried to cut himself. He's obsessed with the idea of an object penetrating his skin. Okay. That just seems like... Oh, God. He needs way much more help, then. However, when, when attacked, he reveals a strong instinct of survival. Will aim for the net willing animal. Hmm? I can't even read the bottom there. Results of McKierney-Steinberg test. We're going straight into complete actual psychological test stuff. Okay. The test has determined that the patient is particularly unable to distinguish reality from fiction. He has trouble realizing where he is, what he is doing, and why he is doing it. This, coupled with his own incoherent speech, with some reoccurring words and syllables, and delusional beliefs, is consistent with a diagnosis of I mean, it says psychosis. Hmm. Interpretation of the diagnosis. Neighbors who knew the patient before his arrest describe him as smart, gentle, and shy, and would have most certainly noticed any of the signs of mental illness de detailed above. Hmm. Therefore, his current psychosis must be seen as a result of a recent event bringing back, back to his something as a trauma from his youth. Was the cat, like, the trauma, like, his trauma then? That was the only thing that they, Apollo and Reed has brought up here. Research into the patient's background shows he did not witness any murder, rape, or accident involving any of his relatives and had a relatively happy childhood. Consequently, one must look into less traditional sources of trauma, i.e. events the adults usually forget, that children can misinterpret and that is potentially devastating something the. Hmm. Interpretation of the diagnosis. The only, thing, only such event considered so far that could fit the patient's condition goes back to his eighth year. According to his mother, his parents bought him a cat named Charles, of which he was particularly fond of. On a Saturday evening in winter, the patient was crossing the street with his cat, when they suddenly something entered a black car driving the the wrong way. Hmm. Page four C or four D. There's a lot of pages here. Strangely, the patient was fast enough to avoid the vehicle while the animal was hit and did not survive. His mother remembers scolding him for taking the cat on a walk for a loan. She also remembers, says that when she and his father trust in the garden, her son actually watched the scene from his bedroom. So it's like almost like word for word, as they mentioned. For days of this incident, the patient did not leave his bed and barely spoke to his family. The only words he uttered were, He died because of me. I killed him, Mom. It has been speculated that it is at this moment that he first discovered its destructive impulses, again thinking himself as a killer. However, mentioning the incident to him has not listed the expected results. Hmm. Oh, well, that was it. That's all of it. Huh. 
Oh, okay then. Hmm. Well, now I'm going back and forth on that whole thing now, like, that detail then. Because, like, this, like, obviously this whole psychological profile, like, paints him as completely just a non-violent and non-aggressive person, like, even when attacked. But, like, well, he obviously, like, goes into flight or flight response, like, obviously when life is in danger, which is kind of typical. But besides that, he's completely shy and, like, he only harms himself instead of other people. That doesn't really match up with all the mysterious bus killings M.O. Well, we don't even know how the victims die, but, like, from the sound of it, like, whoever the killer is, like, broke into everyone's houses and kidnapped them and killed them through some means and left all those items around scattered about and, like, hid them or their bodies somewhere to be found. And if Robert Erlenmeyer is innocent here, I guess... The only words he muttered were, he died because of me, I killed him, mom. Like, he confessed because he associates something, he just associated something about the, the crime, or like, the what he learned about the M.O. or something like that, and like, all that. Did he still, hmm. Like, if he's completely innocent, but he, like, he confessed that he knows some aspects of, like, the M.O. of the mysterious bus killer, then that means he found a crime scene, then. Like, did he even, like, there wasn't anything for, like, victims or anything, any combination for, like, well, the, the report I don't think says anything about him, uh, where victims were, but, like... All the victims and all that, Jake Marshall, fake photos of victims naked, shined by Charles Darwin, like, you know, B negative, age 50, lots of that, Ed Zeppelin, Mono Law, Jack Pot, Claire to Air. Like, unless some, like, one of these people is, like, related to some, some way to Robert Erlenmeyer, to, like, did he just randomly, like, well, am I, if, hmm. <laughs> If, like, the mysterious bus killing crime scenes aren't exactly tied to, like, the victim's, like, I guess, bedrooms. Like, for example, for Benjamin Woodman, like, he's a circus worker. Like, we, we personally have talked to him in, like, the second Ace Attorney game. There could literally just be a whole thing of just, uh, making mysterious bus killing, like, him a uh, sight at, the, like, one of the rooms in the circus. or like, the big top, ten or something like that. It doesn't be tied to the victims themselves. Does that mean, like, instead of, like... There was one of these victims, like, died somewhere outside professionally-wise, like, and, like, a mysterious bus killing, like, happened, like, one of these points. Hmm. Maybe saw the one of the, one of the photos, something like that, like, be traumatized, like, think back to the cat, like, actually started associating so to be blamed for it. Hmm. So weird. Like the very last victim was Nathan Woods. Like that was where he was caught. Nathan Woods and like, hmm. Yeah, I mean, like what was that? Like they didn't mention that. Like neither Nathan or Rhea were technically like had any affiliation with Robert Erlenmeyer. So like, I don't think they did the whole thing of like, oh Nathan, Rhea, that Robert Erlenmeyer is your is your high school teacher and all that. So, hmm. It's still weird. It's still very weird, but, like, honestly, like, oh, God, this is... I, I just like reading through this. I just love reading psychology stuff, but, like, it's still weird, but, like, I think just from that general outburst and all that, he's innocent, at least emotional intelligence, like, emotional intelligence, like, lead wise I guess. Unless I'm, uh, he's that good at lying even when he's mad, but, like, this is an actual psychological report, so, like, yeah. Like that's an act. This is an actual physical and like like documented report. So he's not violent. So he's not the killer. Most likely, there's like s how many victims? Like like any in any case, there was just like a lot, multiple victims, various. No bodies were found. Four, eight, twelve. Like twelve victims. Like doesn't really time make sense for someone who's that non-violent. But in the description of the psychological report to like to be like this way. 
And as I'm, uh, Jessica Poole mentioned, like, everyone was really just geared and had a vendetta against the, you know, the culprit. Like, to the point that I'm, uh, uh, Paul Strings, uh, Judge Chambers, and her herself, like, really band together to, um, uh, make a forgery of a psychological report to put him behind bars. Hmm. And, like, if, like, what was another thing, like, if... If Robert Earl Meyer did just stumble across one of those random crime scenes, sort of associating himself with the with the uh, just the mysterious bus like serial killings or kidnappings or whatever it is by now, if he associates himself with that, then like does it happen? Like doesn't know how he talks and all that. And uh, what was the wording for this again? About I'm trying to realize what he's doing. Where was it? Neighbors who knew the patient before his arrest described him as smart, gentle, and shy would have certainly noticed any signs of mental illness detailed above. So, like, be right before his arrest. So, like, hmm. That means, at the very least, that, like, he saw something. He saw, like, Nathan Witz's crime scene or something like that? If it was like if they mentioned before, like it, like a trigger that makes me go back to thinking his trauma, like went back to him uh, this way speaking. Like when was I'm uh, every single victim here always died like months apart. Through that's that's March, then that's I think January, February, March, April, May, June, July, seventh of July, August, December. Yeah, it's always a haphazard in between of that. The latest person. Die was Nathan Witz. He was the last victim. That's like both um uh that's how Rhea and Judge got together. What was it then? Hmm. There's really nothing point to anyone really so far. Hmm. Yeah, this is puzzling. Very puzzling. And what's the whole thing with the rats? Like, why exactly, like, would the mysterious bus killer, like, inject the mice with it? And they were behind its cage as well. And it was not an M.O. for it either. It's just another weird thing to think about. Like, oh, is this actually, like, I'm, uh... Well, there was no mention of, like, mice or anything like that, but, like... For other poor cases, like, is this actually the method, like, how the victims died? We really have their, we don't really have their bodies, so, like, we can't really do any tests like that, toxicology reports or anything like that, but, like, is that it? Like, having mice, like, bite them? But, like, that seems like a leaving a lot of chance. Unless, like, make the mice, like, aggressive to talk about? Like, what was it, like, it's contagious to human beings, like, didn't, like, Emma say they bite? Or literally just, um, uh, like, how the plague works of, like, Liam, uh, you just have to be in the, the presence of the rats themselves to be that it, but, like, oh, well, Emma wasn't exactly worried about, I guess, like, since, like, we were around it, so, like, I'm assuming just a bite, then? I guess so. I'm just spitballing here for a lot of different things, but, yeah, there's a lot here. Okay, we got a general gist of the crime scene. We literally just only just verified that the judge was there at the wrong place at the wrong time for whatever reason why why they were there, like whoever was there at the cemetery. Like just really just okay. Alright. Okay, so the mice. Why anyone was there at the time in the middle of the goddamn night walking through all that yeah, that's the only thing. Huh. I guess, well, you're, like, he's gonna bring up, like, who the killer is later on. He's probably just gonna go back to being crazy and just do the whole dramatics things in the court and all that. Or, like, be the dude in a goddamn day investigating. God damn it. This seems pretty cut and dry, though, so, mm. Mm. Oh, I'm being around the bush here, but, like, just, like, just reading through the whole psychologi psychological report is, like, just fascinating to me. Just, like, I just like reading, like, stuff like that. Even, like, even, like, kind of like horoscope stuff which i know is it's, it's all just complete bs but like it's fun to read and all that but this was really fun <laughs> uh interest in psychology here but they keep pushing up psychology and we gotta prove what the mo means and i have no idea exactly how to prove that like even what the purpose of that is 
that must mean there must be there's a lot of things that we don't know that we're gonna find out here in the next investigation then so i guess that we just the way and let's see jessica pool um uh, you said you found some things in the in judge's room that i'm gonna change a lot of things of the crime well wow us spectacularize us uh glamorize everything and put us all to shame oh boy oh boy oh but i guess we'll see whatever the evidence may be for next time so Whoever time watches uh, watching this as I am playing this, hope to see you next time, the time that may be, and I all hope a fantastic day.